Hey there, internets. I'm Michael, and this is Two Can Play That Game. And today, you'll be able to see a game of Dead of Winter. Now, if you still need to learn how to set up and play this game, please do watch my previous video. Also, if you're interested in finding out my thoughts and opinion on this game, you can do so in my review that will be the final video in this series. So, with that out of the way, let's take it to the table for a game of Dead of Winter. Welcome to the table for a game of Dead of Winter, a crossroads game. So I have the table set out here for a two player game. And we're going to be playing the suggested objective as per the rule book, which is we need more samples. So to set this up, we've got the morale at six, the round track at five, and our victory condition is that every time a zombie is killed, we'll roll a die. If the result is four or more, we'll add a zombie token to the objective. If we accumulate eight zombies on the main objective, then we win the game. And this should be a short game. And this is, of course, we're using the hardcore side because we're playing co-op because this is a two player game and that's part of what you have to do for the two player variant. Now, we don't have any secret objectives or potential betrayers either. If this was three players or more, then we would. Okay, so let's go through what we have here. So playing with me today is Rogue and Rogue is going to be the player on the left here who has the first player marker and her survivors she has Maria Lopez that's who's a teacher with an attack of four a search of two and her ability is at the school on a one or more once per round she may kill a zombie without rolling for exposure then her followers are John Price, who's a student, very fitting given he she has the teacher, and he has attack free, search free, and at any non-colony location, when John is not in the colony, he is considered to have the ability of every other survivor he shares a location with. And then Carla is the police dispatcher, and she has an attack of four, a search of two, and once per round when performing a search at the police station, may look at and keep an additional card. Then I'm gonna be on the right here, and my leader is Loretta Clay, the cook, who has an attack of two plus, a search of four plus, and at the colony on a four plus, once per round may add two food tokens to the supply. I feel that'll be a very useful ability. And then my followers, we have Alexis Gray, the librarian, who has an attack of five plus and a search of four plus, so that's not great stats. But at the library, once per round when performing a search, she may look at and keep one additional card. And my other follower is the ninja, Mike Cho. And he has an attack of two plus and a search of four plus. And where, anywhere, when performing an attack with Mike, do not roll for exposure. So good for attacking. Okay, so with that out the way, let's get into the game. And the first thing we need to do is reveal our first crisis. And so we have our crisis here, it is illness. We need a number of medicine equal to non-exiled players. So two medicine cards. Place one wound token on all non-exiled survivors, lose one morale if fail. So that's pretty nasty and we'll gain a morale if we put two additional ones in. So then we need to roll our action dice. So I'll roll mine. Ugh, high numbers, not good. Sorry, no, high numbers is good. What am I talking about? Um, oh, low numbers, not good. So then with our dice rolled, it is rogues go here so i take a crossroads card and what we got okay so this is going to trigger so let's take a look at what we have here it's christmas if a survivor the player controls is at the colony and rogue does have survivors at the colony i was talking to a couple of other people and well we think tomorrow might be christmas maybe it's a stupid thing to hold on to but i think people could use a distraction 
What if we made dinner for everyone? A real dinner, I mean. Every player with one or more survivors at the colony must vote with a thumbs up or thumbs down. The option with the most votes takes effect. So, thumbs up, we have. Spend five food, gain one morale. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any food in the supply to spend. So that's not going to be an option. And the rest of this is only if Forrest Plum is in play, which he's not. And then the thumbs down option is nothing happens. So nothing's going to happen this time. So we'll just put that back on the bottom of the deck and then Rogue can continue with her turn. So the first thing Rogue wants to do is move Carla out. So she's going to pay some fuel so it will be safe to do so, so that she doesn't have to roll for exposure. And she's going to move into the first of the free spaces at the police station here. And then she's going to perform a search, which uses a two dice. And once per round, when performing a search at the police station, you may look at and keep one additional card. So she's going to draw two cards. So let's take a look at what she's drawn here. We have a tactical rifle and a padlock. So the tactical rifle is a weapon and once per round you may kill one zombie at any location and do not roll for exposure and it's not an attack and doesn't cost a die. Well that's pretty good. Or the padlock place two barricades at a location that a survivor you control is at. This does not require you to use an action die. Well I think Carla is going to take this tactical rifle here and the padlock will go back on the bottom of the deck and Carla's feeling a bit naughty so she's just going to keep this rifle for herself and she's actually going to immediately use it as well and kill a zombie at the police station with it. We killed a zombie and because our objective is we need more samples we need to roll a dice and we rolled a one. That's not good. We want high numbers here. So I've used one dice so far and I need to contribute medicine, but I don't have any medicine. So I think what's going to happen is Maria's going to go out and do some killing. So I need to move Maria and I want to move her to the school so that she can use her ability there. But by doing this move, I have to roll exposure because I don't have any more fuel. Or, I should say, Rogue doesn't have any more fuel. And she's rolled a wound, so we take a wound token here and we put it on Maria. But at least it wasn't a bite. And then we'll use this two value to use Maria's ability to kill a zombie at the school and not roll for exposure. But we still roll for our sample. That's better, six. That's what we like to see. So we now have one of our zombie samples. Okay, so what else does Rogue want to do then? Rogue is gonna move John here out to the school as well, because you know, the student wants to follow the teacher. But of course, again, we have to roll exposure. Oh, we're okay. So Rogue rolled a blank. And so nothing happens to John. But then John can now use Maria's ability. So we're going to expand this four dice to kill another zombie without rolling for exposure. And of course, we then roll for our sample. And we only get a three, so it's not enough to get a sample. Now, Rogue's going to use one food to put a food token in the food supply to help feed my survivors who are still there in case they choose not to leave. So Rogue has one dice left and she's going to use that to place a barricade and she's going to place it at the police station. And that is then the end of Rogue's turn and it's now my turn which means Rogue needs to draw a crossroads card and this will be triggering so army if a survivor the player controls is at the colony which i do have all my survivors at the colony the soldiers in army uniforms make predictable demands have food ready when they return or the colony will be burnt to the ground every player with one or more survivors at the colony 
so me, because Rogue doesn't have any at the colony currently, must vote with a thumbs up or down. The option with the most votes takes effect. Thumbs up, add the following victory condition to the current main objective in addition to any victory conditions already listed. Have five food in the supply. Thumbs down, your ambush is surprisingly effective and their losses are worse than yours. The cowards flee in a disorganised fashion. Roll a dice for each survivor at the colony. On each result of three or lower, that survivor receives one wound. Or if Thomas Hart is at the colony, which he's not. So we can ignore the alternative at the bottom here. So either I can take some wounds or we have to add having food to the wing conditions. Hmm. I think I'm going to go with the have five food in the supply. So we, I'm going to put this just with the main objective here so that we now know we also need to have five food in the supply in order to complete the main objective. Okay, and now I can continue with my turn. So we have Loretta here at the colony. Um, so I think I'm going to use her ability using this five dice to place two food in the supply. And we really need some medicine because we haven't contributed any yet. Unfortunately, I don't have anyone who's good at searching and I only have one medicine on me, so I'm not going to contribute anything yet. I am going to use some fuel and move Mike Cho out of the colony and he's going to go to the grocery store here. And then I'm going to use one dice to kill a zombie, which I don't have to roll for exposure with Mike because that's his special ability. And I rolled a six for the sample, so we get a sample. So that's our second sample. And then I'm going to use this free to do another attack. So I kill another zombie and do we get a sample? Yes, we do. So of the eight samples we need, we've already got three. So we're doing pretty well here. Now I've got one dice left, so I could use that to kill this zombie. But I think what I'm actually going to do is use it to place a barricade at the colony. And that's then going to be my go over with. So with the player turns over, we then move on to the colony phase. So we must play food. Well. We've only got two survivors there, so we have to pay one food, which we've got plenty to cover. We then check our waste, and we have three cards, so we've got less than ten, so we're fine there. We then resolve our crisis. Ah, we didn't contribute any cards, so we have indeed failed. So we need to place one wound token on all non-exiled survivors. So... Maria now has two, so she could do with a bit of healing. Because one more wound and she's going to die. And everyone else is on one. So we could do with some medicine. And we do lose a mor morale, so we're down to five morale. But we're done with that one at least now. Next, we need to add zombies. So we would add one at the police station here, but instead we remove the barricade. And the same will go for the colony. We do add one to the grocery store and two to the school here though. And we didn't make any noise, so we don't need to resolve any noise tokens. Next, we check the main objective. Well, we don't have five food and we don't have eight samples, so that's a no. And we move the round tracker down, so we're down on to four rounds. Then pass the first player token. So first player po token passes round to me. And that is then the end of the round. So we begin again with the player turns phase. So we reveal the crisis. And the crisis we have is legions of death. 
fuel equal to the number of non-exiled players is required. So we need two fuel cards, and I've been spending a lot of fuel cards. And if we fail, we'll add 12 zombies to the colony. Oh, that's harsh. That's really harsh. That's a lot of zombies to the colony. But that could be good because we need to kill a lot of zombies. And that would then mean we've got the zombies there to kill. And we don't actually lose any morale. Okay, so we then roll out action dice. So we'll roll rogues. Good spread of numbers there for her. And mine. Yeah, it's all right again. And then it's my turn. So rogue will draw a crossroads card and it does not trigger at this time. So let us wait and see if it does. So it is my go. Well, I want to use Loretta's ability to place two food. She can never have too much food, especially when we need five food in the supply. Um, which leaves me with a lot of low numbers. So I can't do any searching. I haven't got the numbers for that. Unless I use junk to re-roll. We are kind of desperate for some medicine here. So I'm going to use a junk which will allow me to re-roll die and I'm going to re-roll this one. And I get a two. Great. So yeah, I'm not going to be doing any searches. So what I'm going to do is spend a two to do an attack with Mike Cho. And do we get a sample? Yes, we do. Brilliant. So we're up to four, we're halfway there. And I'm then gonna use a free to do another attack with Mike Cho. And we don't get a sample. Now yeah, that's a shame. But still, yeah, halfway there, we're, we're doing well. Um, so I can't do any searches. I could use fuel to move Mike. I could use that final dice to do another kill, which I think I think might be the sensible option. So Mike's gonna go to the police station. I don't want to take any risks. I know, I know we need fuel here, but in fact I'm gonna spend fuel to not roll for exposure, and then I'm gonna use my final dice, which is a free, to do another attack. And do we get a sample? Yes, we do. So we're now more than halfway. So we're doing pretty well here. I can't believe how well we're doing. It's shocking. And before I end my turn, I'm going to hand off a card to Rogue because I feel sorry for Maria. And we now have someone at the same location, so I can do that. And that is then the end of my turn. So the Crossroads card did not trigger. That will go to the bottom of the deck. And it's now Rogue's turn. And so I draw a crossroads card. It does not trigger. And the first thing Rogue wants to do is use some medicine, which will allow me to remove one wound from Maria. So she's not quite as near death now, at least. And before I start looking at my dice, I'm going to have Carla use her rifle to kill this last zombie here. That's her assault rifle. Oh, and we get a sample. I can't believe how well this is going. It's shocking. I've never had a game go this well. Um, okay. Well, if seeing as we're doing so well, I might actually, I'm gonna put some food in the supply. You know, I'm gonna put extra food in as well. So now we've got six food in the supply. So we're doing well on that front. I haven't got any cards to contribute to the crisis, so maybe I should do some searching. So I'll use a two to do a search with Carla at the police station, so I can look at two cards. And they're both identical here. We have two Colt 911 pistols that, when you're equipped once per round, when the survivor performs an attack, do not roll for exposure. So is there anyone who has a good attack value that we could give this to. I mean, Loretta's got quite a good one. But uh, Rogue, Rogue doesn't want to share. So Rogue's going to keep one of these pistols and give it 
to John. Because that's what you want, a student with a gun. Makes perfect sense. So, having done that, we're then going to have Maria do a kill at the school using a free and she doesn't have to roll exposure due to her ability. And let's see if we get a sample. We do. Oh my god, we are one sample off. Well, I'm going to have John do the same because he can copy her ability and doesn't have to roll exposure. And do we get the final sample? We have got... Oh my god, we've done this in two rounds? No way. I can't believe we've done this so quickly. So I really, I just can't believe it. And I've still got a dice left here. So what do I want to do with that dice? Well, let's do some more killing. I, I don't see why not. Um, so we'll, John will use his gun to kill another zombie at the school. Uh, let's just see if we can get more samples than we need. No, we can't. Okay, <laughs> I rolled a one that time. So, so much luck on the, the dice getting the samples and so much killing going on. Wow. Awesome game. <laughs> okay, um, so the Crossroads card did not trigger. And that is the end of Rogue's turn. So we move on to our colony phase. We pay food. Well, we only have to pay one food because we only got two survivors there. We check our waste. Oh, there's quite a few cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Only eight. So we don't lose any morale for that. We then resolve the crisis. Now, we have failed this because we didn't put any cards in again. And we'll add 12 zombies to the colony. But you know what? We can afford to do that. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So no locations have been overrun. We then need to add zombies. Well, we only have to add one to the colony, so that will go in this one spot. So we're close there to being overrun, but we're not quite. And then on our colony locations, we don't have any noise or barricades, but we'll have two at the police station and two at the school. And so no locations overrun there either. And then we check our main objective. Well, so accumulate four zombies on this main objective for each player that started the game, which was a total of eight. And we have our eight samples. And for the army here, we need to, to have five food in the supply which we do. So me and Rogue working together have, def well, I was gonna say have defeated the dead of winter, but actually all we've done is survive the dead of winter. But still, we, we survived it and we met our objective. So jolly good us. And of course, that is the end of the game. And that is dead of winter. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and of course if you have please do subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos on the channel and also share it with your friends and family. Also you can find us on social media we are on Facebook and also on Twitter and as always thanks for watching and bye for now.